Hi, welcome, blessings to you and your family. Today we will be reading about the life of Jacob. Previously we read of the life of Abraham, then we read about the life of Isaac, and today will be Jacob. We will be starting in Genesis 25, and I will be reading from the New King James Version. Now, we'll stroll down to verse 19. This is where we first see Jacob mentioned. So we'll start here. This is the genealogy of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the children struggled together within her, and she said, If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall become separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So that's a prophecy. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. And we see we have a D there. Esau is hairy. Afterward, his brother came out. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. We see an E there. Supplanter or deceitful. One who takes the heel. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, but Jacob was a mild man, dwelling in tents, and Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now we see Esau sells his birthright because Esau was first born. Now Jacob cooked a stool and Esau came in from the field and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stool for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom which means G red Edom is also a land where Esau dwelt but Jacob said sell me your birthright as of this day because the blessing goes to the firstborn so he wanted the birthright of the firstborn and Esau said look I am about to die, so what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me 
as of this day and we see an H here and we see take an oath so he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob and Jacob gave Esau bread and stool of lentils then he ate and drank arose and went his way thus Esau despised his birthright so next we're going to skip 26 because there's no mention of it it's just speaking of Isaac we're going to focus on Jacob Now it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son. And he answered him, Here I am. Then Isaac said, Then he said, Behold now, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may be that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt game and to bring it. So Rebekah spoke to Jacob, her son, saying, Indeed, I heard your father speak to Esau, your brother, saying, Bring me game and make savory food for me that I may eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. Go now to the flock and bring me from there two choice kids of the goats, and I will make savory food for, from them for your father, such as he loves. Then you shall take it to your father, that he may eat it, and that he may bless you before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Look, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will fill me, and I shall seem to be a deceiver to him. And I shall bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. But his mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go. Get them for me. And he went and got them and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory food such as his father loved. Then... Rebekah took the choice clothes of her elder son Esau, which were, in, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she gave the savory food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. So he went to his father and said, So he went to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit and eat of my game, that your soul may bless me. 
But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you found you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord of your God brought it to me. Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him, because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Then he said, Are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. He said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's game, so that my soul may bless you. So he brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing. And blessed him and said, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. Now it happened, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless me. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I have blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. And Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? So we have an E there. What does E say? Supplanter or deceitful? One who takes the heel. Who's being deceitful? Continuing at 36. For he was supplant, for he has supplanted me these two times of the blessing and of the firstborn, the birthright, being the firstborn. He took away my birthright, and now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him your master, and all his brethren I have given to him as servants. With grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? 
And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of the heaven from above. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. In the words of Esau, her older son were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob her younger son and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, arise, and flee to my brother Laban in Haran. And stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you, and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved also of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, like these t who are the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? Twenty-eight. Then Isaac called Jacob, and blessed him, and charged him, and said to him, you shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may be an assembly of peoples and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger which God gave to Abraham so Isaac sent Jacob away and he went to Padam Aram to Laban the son of Bethel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. We're going to skip this about Isaac. Esau we're going to skip Esau and only focus on Jacob now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the Sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and it stopped, its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. 
And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am Lord God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. Not only will they possess the land that was promised to Abraham, but he's telling them, you shall spread abroad. So how does that happen? That's a prophecy that we'll see later on. And in you, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now we're going to find out how that happens. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on it, and he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of the city of that city had been Luz previously. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going, and give me bread to eat and clo clothing to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Twenty nine. So Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. And he looked and saw a well in the field, and behold, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. A large stone was on the well's mouth. Now all the flocks would be gathered there, and they would roll the stone from the well's mouth, water the sheep, and put the stone back in its place on the well's mouth. And Jacob said to them, My brethren, where are you from? And they said, We are from Haran. Then he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. So he said to them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And look, his daughter Rachel is coming with the sheep. Then he said, Look, it is still high day. It is not time for the cattle to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go and feed them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered together. And they have rolled the stone from the whale's mouth. Then we water the sheep. Now while he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, 
that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the whale's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative and that he was Rebekah's son. So she ran and told her father. Then it came to pass when Laban heard the report about Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. So he told Laban all these things, and Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in to her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to Jacob. And he went into her, and Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah, Leah, as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also. And Laban gave his maid Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as a maid. Then Jacob also went in to Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Laban still another seven years. 20, verse 31, Jacob starts having children. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, The Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also, and she called his name Simeon. So Simeon is second born, and Reuben is the first born. She conceived again, the third time, and bore a son, and said, Now this time my husband 
will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. And she conceived again a fourth time and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. Then she stopped barren. Chapter 30 now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children, or else I die. And Jacob's anger was aroused against Rachel. And he said, Am I in the place of God, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? So she said, Here is my maid, Belhath. Go into her, and she will bear a child on my knees, that I also may have children by her. So I'm going to pause right here. So who else did this? Who else gave her husband a maid to have a child for her? It was Sarah. Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham to have a son for her. That was the story of Ishmael. That's how Ishmael came. So this starts to set up what we will see later on. But we're seeing right here also. But it's setting up that biblical history is biblical prophecy the things that happened to the forefathers happens to Israel so it becomes more and more clear as we go it's pretty incredible opens I don't know if I want to say open but it makes a lot of things in the Bible clear so take a drink real quick and we'll continue So I'll just start at three again. So she said, Here is my maid Bilha. Go into her, and she will bear you a child on my knees, that I also may have children by her. Then she gave him Bilha, her maid, as wife. And Jacob went into her, and Bilha conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged my case, and he has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. And Rachel's maid Bilha conceived again a second time and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had stopped barren, she took Zilpath, her maid, and gave her to Jacob as wife. And Leah's made Zilpath bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, A troop comes. So she called his name Gad. And Leah's maid Zilpath, Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, I am happy for the daughters will call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. Now Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. 
But she said to her, Is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you also take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob. Jacob, a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my wages, because I have given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Isha, Ishakar. Then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God has endowed me with a good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. Afterward, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel and God listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. So she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. So we'll look here real quick. And I'll zoom, make this larger, just for this. So Jacob had two wives and their maidservants, Leah and her maid, Zilpah. Rachel and her maid, Bilhah. Leah gave Jacob a total of six sons and one daughter, Reuben the firstborn son, Simeon, secondborn son, Levi, the third son, Judah, the fourth son, Issachar, the ninth-born son, Zebulun, the tenth-born son, and she bore Dinah, a daughter. Zilpah, Zilpah, Leah's maid gave Jacob two sons, Gad, the seventh-born son, Asher, the eighth-born son, Rachel, we will see, where we just stopped, she had just born Joseph, but she also said that the Lord shall add to me another son. And we'll see that in a little bit, too, but just for this, we'll see. Rachel gave Jacob a total of two sons, Joseph, the 11th born son, Benjamin, the 12th born son. Rachel's maid, Bilhah, gave Jacob two sons, Dan, the 5th born son, Naphtali, the 6th born son. So, in total... Jacob had 12 sons, and these are the sons as born in order. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. And this is important because these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And we'll continue now. Verse 25 of Genesis 30. And it came to pass 
when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you. And let me go, for you know my service which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, Please stay, if I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said, Name me your wages, and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock has been with me. For what you had before I came was little, and it was increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now, when shall I also provide for my own house? So he said, What shall I give you? And Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep, and all the brown ones among the lambs, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and these shall be my wages, so my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. When the subject of my wages comes before you, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs will be considered stolen if it is with me. And Laban said, Oh, that is that it were according to your word. So he removed that day the male goats that were speckled and spotted, all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had some white in it, and all the brown ones among the lambs, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Then he put three days' journey between himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Now Jacob took for himself rods of green polar and of the almond and chestnut cheese, peeled white strips in them, and exposed the white which was in the rods. And the rods which he had peeled he set before the flocks in the gutters, in the watering throws where the flocks came to drink so that they should conceive when they came to drink so the flocks conceived before the rods and the flocks brought forth streaked speckled and spotted then Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the streaked and all the brown in the flock of Laban but he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. And it came to pass whenever the stronger livestock conceived that Jacob placed in the rods before the eyes of the livestock in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. So the feebler, the feebler, were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. Thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. Chapter 31 Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, 
and from what was our father's he has acquired all his wealth and Jacob saw the countenance countenance of Laban and indeed it was not favorable to toward him as before then the Lord said to Jacob return to the land of your fathers and to your family and I will be with you so Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field to his flock and said to them I see your father's countenance that it is not fav favorable toward me as before but the God of my father has been with me and you know that with all my might I have served your father let your father has deceived yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times but God did not allow him to hurt me if he said thus the speckled shall be your wages then all the flocks born speckled and if he said thus the speckled shall be your wages then all the flocks bore streaked if the streaked shall be your wages then all the flocks bore streaked so God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me and it happened at that time at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream and behold the rams which leaped upon the flocks were streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift your eyes now and see. All the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. For I have been... For I have seen all that Laban, Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house are we not considered strangers by him for he has sold us and also completely consumed our money for all these riches which God has taken from our father are really ours and our children's now then whatever God has said to you do it then Jacob rose and set his sons and his wives on camels and he carried away all his livestock and all his possessions which he had gained, his acquired livestock which he had gained in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep and Rachel had stolen the household idols that were her father's. And Jacob stole away, unknown to Laban the Assyrian, in that he did not tell him that he intended to flee. So he fled with all that he had. He arose and crossed the river and headed toward the mountains of Gilead. And Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled. Then he took his brethren with him and pursued him for seven days' journey. And he overtook him in the mountains of Gilead. But God had come to Laban, the Assyrian, in a dream by night and said to him, Be careful that you speak to Laban neither good or nor bad. So Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mountains, and Laban with his brethren pitched 
in the mountains of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have stolen away unknown to me and carried away my daughter like captives taken with the sword? Why did you flee away secretly and steal away from me and not tell me? For I might have sent you away with joy and songs, with timbrel and harp, and you did not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Now you have done foolishly in so doing. It is in my power to do you harm, but the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. And now you have surely gone because you greatly long for your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? Then Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Perhaps you would take your daughters from me by force. With whomever you find your gods, do not let him live in the presence of our brethren. Identify what I have of yours and take it with you. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the two maids' tents, but he did not find them. Then he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken this household idols, put them in the camel saddle, and sat on them. And Laban searched all about the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise before you, for the manner of woman of women is with me. And he searched, but did not find the household idols. Then Jacob was angry and rebuked Laban, and Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin, that you have so hotly pursued me? Although you have searched all my things, what part of your household things have you found? Set it here before my brethren and your brethren, that they may judge between us both these twenty years I have been with you. Your eels and your female goats have not miscarried their young, and I have not eaten the rams of your flock, that which was torn by beasts I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. There I was, in the day the drought consumed me, in the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus I have been in your house twenty years. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock, and you have changed my wages ten times, unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my affliction in the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and this flock is my flock. All that you see is mine, but what can I do this day to these my daughters or to their children whom they have borne? Now therefore come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. Then Jacob said to his brethren, 
gather stones, and they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there on the heap. They even called it Jigar Shahadua, but Jacob called it Galilee. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore its name was called Galilee, also Mizpath. Because he said, May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent one from another. If you afflict my daughters, or if you take other wives beside my daughters, Although no man is with us, see, God is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, here is, the, here is this heap, and here is this pillar which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness, that I will not pass beyond this heap to you, and you will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me for harm. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, and the God of their father judge between us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called his brethren to eat bread. And they ate bread and stayed all night on the mountain. And early in the morning Laban arose and kissed his sons and daughters and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned to his place. Chapter 32 so Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. Then Jacob saw them. He said, This is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother in the land of Sheer, the country of Edom. So see. Esau dwelling became the country of Edom and he commanded them saying speak thus to my lord Esau thus your servant Jacob says I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now I have oxen donkeys flocks and male and female servants and I have spent I have sent to tell you my lord that I may Find favor in your sight. Then the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he also is coming to meet you. And four hundred men are with him. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And he divided the people that were with him, and the flocks and the herds and camels, into two companies. And he said, If Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the other company which is left will escape. Then Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you have sh shown your servant. For I crossed over the, this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him lest he come and attack me and the mother with the children. 
For you said, I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So he lodged there that same night and took what came to his hand as a present for Esau his brother, two hundred female goats and twenty male goats, two hundred eels and twenty rams, thirty milk camels with their colts, forty cows and ten bulls, twenty female donkeys and ten falls. Then he delivered them to the hand of his servants. Every drove by itself and said to his servants, Pass over before me, and put some distance between successive droves. And he commanded the first one, saying, When Esau my brother meets you and asks you, saying, To whom do you belong, and where are you going? Whose are these in front of you? Then you shall say, They are your servants, your servant Jacob's. It is a present sent to my lord Esau. And behold, he also is behind us. So he commanded the second, the third, and also and all who followed the drove, saying, In this manner you shall speak to Esau when you find him. And also say, Behold, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me, and afterward I will see his face, perhaps he will accept me. So the present went on over before him, but he himself lodged that night in the camp. He's afraid because the last thing he knew, Jacob or Esau wanted to kill him for stealing his blessing. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Biblical history is biblical prophecy, just as Abram's name was changed to Abraham. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed then Jacob asked saying tell me your name I pray and he said why is it that you ask about my name and he blessed him there so Jacob called the name of that place Peniel for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved just as he crossed over Pignol, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shank. Chapter 33. Now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were four hundred men. So he divided 
the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two maidservants, and he put the maidservants and their, ch and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted his eyes and saw the woman and children and said, Who are these with you? So he said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maidservants came near, they and their children, and bowed down. And Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward, Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Then Esau said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, These are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, No, please. If I have found if I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand, inasmuch as I have seen your face as though I had seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me. Please take my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dwelt graciously with me, and because I have enough. So he urged him, and he took it. Then Esau said, Let us take our journey. Let us go, and I will go before you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are weak, and the flocks and herds which are nursing are with me. And if the men should drive them hard one day, all the flock will die. Please let my Lord go on ahead before his servant. I will lead on slowly at a pace which the livestock that go before me and the children are able to endure until I come to my Lord in Seir. And Esau said, Now let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, What need is there? Let me find favor in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Sheer, and Jacob journeyed to Sukkot, built himself a house, and made booths for his livestock. There the name of the place is called Sukkot. Then Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. When he came from Padam Aram, and he pitched his tent before the city, and he brought the parcel of land where he had pitched his tent from the children of Hamar, Shechem's father, for one hundred pieces of money. Then he erected an altar there and called it El Elhol Israel. Chapter 34 Okay Now Dinah the daughter of Leah Whom she had born to Jacob Went out to see the daughters of the land And when Shechem she Shechem the son of Hamar The Hevite prince of the country saw her he took her and lay with her and violated her his soul was strongly attracted to Dinah the daughter of Jacob and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman so Shechem spoke to his father Hamor saying get me this young woman as a wife and Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah his daughter 
Now his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamar, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter as a thing which ought not be done. But Hamar spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son, Shechem, longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife and make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us and take our daughters to yourselves. So you shall dwell with us and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Then she come said to his fa to her father and her brothers Let me find favor in your eyes and whatever you say to me I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift and I will give according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamar his father and spoke deceitfully because he had defiled Dinah their sister and they said to them we cannot do this thing to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised for that would be a reproach to us but on this condition we will consent to you if you will become as we are if every male of you is circumcised then we will give our daughters to you and we will take your daughters to us and we will dwell with you and we will become one people but if you will not heed us and be circumcised then we will take our daughter and be gone so their words please Hamar and Shechem Hamar's son so the young man did not delay to do the thing, because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. In Hamor, in Shechem, his son came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men of their city, saying, These men are at peace with us. Therefore let them dwell in the land and trade in it. For indeed the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men consent to dwell with us, to be one people. If every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised, will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of, the, of theirs be ours only let us consent to them and they will dwell with us and all who went out of the gate of his city heeded Hamor and Shechem his son every male was circumcised all who went out of the gate of his city now it came to pass on the third day when they were in pain that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, that would be Simeon and Levi, the second born and the third born. Dinah's brothers each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males and they killed Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah 
from Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys. What was in the city and what was in the field and all their wealth. All their little ones and their wives they took captive and they plundered even all that was in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against me and kill me. I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, Should he treat our sister like a harlot? Chapter 35 Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, Purify yourselves and cha change your garments. Let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands, and the earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him, and he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel under the terebinth tree, so the name of it was called Alon Bakoth. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padam Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. So we have the twelve sons, which become the twelve tribes of Israel. And here we see God, also God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply a nation, that's Israel, and a company of nations shall proceed from you. So how does that happen? We're going to find out how that happens. And kings shall come from your body. 
the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you and to your descendants after you I give this land then God went up from him in the place where he talked with him so Jacob set up a pillar in the place where God talked with him a pillar of stone and he poured a drink offering on it and he poured oil on it and Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke to him Bethel then they journeyed from Bethel and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath Rachel labored in childbirth and she had hard labor now it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said to her do not fear you will have this son also and so it was as her soul was departing for she died that she called his name Ben Onai but his father called him Benjamin the twelfth son which we see here the last son Benjamin so Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath that is Bethlehem that is where Jesus was born the sea Let's check that. Bethlehem. What does that mean? It's the house of bread. Bethlehem. A place of bread. A city in Judah, also a city in Zebulun. A place of bread or a house of bread. House of bread. Jesus is the bread of life where he was born. The bread of life was born in the house of bread. And Jacob set a pillar on her grave, which is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Then Israel, Israel, Jacob, journeyed and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder. And it happened when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Belha, his father's concubine. And Israel heard about it. Bilha, who's Bilha? We saw that Bilha was the maid given to Rachel by her father and Bilha gave Jacob Rachel's maid gave Jacob two sons Dan and Naphtali but his firstborn son Reuben slept with her as we see here then Israel journeyed and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Edor and it happened when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben his firstborn son went and lay with Bilhah his father's concubine in Israel heard it now this is going to be important even so it's just two verses it's important and we're going to see why and the story of Dinah the sister is important because we see Simeon and Levi killing people now we have three of them that has done evil and we're going to see why that's important in just a little bit.
35. So, now the sons of Jacob were 12. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi. We just mentioned them right now. Reuben's firstborn, his secondborn, and thirdborn. We just read that they did evil. Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maidservant, were Dan and Naphtali. The sons of Zilpah, Leah's maidservant, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padam Aram. And the 12 sons are very important because they became the 12 tribes of Israel. Then Jacob came to his father Isaac at Morer or Kerhath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years. So Isaac breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. These are the family of Esau. I'm not going to go over Esau because we're focusing on our patriarchs of our faith. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All the things that I skip over because I'm focusing on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We can always go back and read that. So, Joseph, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop this video because it's just been over a little bit of an hour and I don't want this to become a very long video because we still have lots to go. And until this point, I've been skipping things that don't pertain. They're not speaking of... Like I just skipped over Esau. It's, that's Esau. I want to focus on Jacob. So I did that with Abraham. Did that with Isaac. And I'm doing that with Jacob. But now this becomes very, very important. Joseph becomes very important. So we're going to be, as the life of Jacob is told, it's also telling you about Joseph. And I have to include this because this, you have to understand this if you want to know how the Bible speaks and what it's speaking about and not get misled or mistaught. So I'm going to stop this and I'm going to make another one starting here, the Genesis 37. We're going to start on verse 1. So, I thank you for being here. I thank you for listening. And I hope this has been a blessing to you. May God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and J Jacob, bless you and keep your family safe always. Thank you.